I was recently working in DaVinci Resolve on my Mac with some iPhone footage, and I found that my original iPhone footage had great colors, but when I was looking at it in DaVinci Resolve or exporting a project, the results were incredibly washed out and desaturated. So after a lot of trial and error with different solutions I found online, I finally came across a couple of fixes that resolved the problem. And scrolling down in these notes, I have uh, the output of those two fixes. So in fix number one, it's a matter of changing the color profile on your export. So this is gonna globally fix your video. And you can see this produces the best results when we compare it with the original footage. In fix number two, we're gonna do a clip by clip fix of the color. And in my opinion, this isn't quite as good as the original footage or fix number one, but uh, for me, it's satisfactory enough. And this is the fix I go with if I'm dealing with a project that has a mixed uh, source of clips. Let's say some of it comes from an iPhone and some of it's coming from some other source where I need to fix just the iPhone footage. Fix number two is what I'm gonna go with there. If it's all coming from the same iPhone and I'm globally having the problem, fix number one is going to be the best approach and it's going to give the best results. So in terms of the structure of this video, I will include time codes to both of those fixes so you can jump ahead if you want. Before you do that though, there is one setting change that everyone should make. So let's switch over to DaVinci Resolve and we want to go into our global program settings. So on the top left, I'll click DaVinci Resolve and go to Preferences. And then within here, I'm gonna to go to general. And then I wanna make sure that use Mac display color profiles for viewers is checked. In my case it is, so I'll go ahead and click save. And now we're gonna get into the individual fixes, starting with fix number one, uh, where in our export settings, so I'm gonna switch over to the export tab. We wanna look under our advanced settings. There are two color space related settings. There's the color space tag and the gamma tag. And there's lots of different options we can choose from here. I tried many different options in experimenting and looking at different solutions online. And the options I found that worked the best are the closest matched to the color space settings on my iPhone videos. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna bring up my finder window and I have that original footage clip I was showing uh, previously. I'm gonna right click this and go to get info. And we can see under color profile, it says BT 2020. So when setting my color profile output, I wanted to find BT 2020, but it's not one of the options listed here. However, there is Rec 2020, which uh, according to Wikipedia, these are effectively the same thing. They're just different names for it. Rec 2020 is the equivalent of BT 2020. Now for gamma tag, if we go back to our color profile information for the clip, we can see it mentions HLG. And in the gamma tag list, I found that Arab standard B67 HLG was the only gamma tag that mentioned that HLG. So I went ahead and tried it. And of the various color space tags and gamma tags that were suggested online and the various ones that I tried, this combination of settings, which most closely matched what I was seeing for the color profile of my clips, produced the results that I was looking for. So that fixed the problem with my rendered outputs, but I was still seeing washed out colors when I was working in DaVinci itself. To address this, I went into my project settings. So on the bottom right, click the little cog, and then under color management, we could set a color space for our timeline. Now, if we applied the same logic we did when setting our color space for our output, we would think that the best color space to choose here would be Rec 2020 HLG. However, if we choose that, the end result is it's actually way too saturated. It's way too blown out. So seeing that, I basically just played around with the different color space options. And what I found was Rec 2020 scene seemed to give me the best results. And I'll go ahead and show that now. So that's much better, much closer to my original footage, at least close enough for me to edit and work with. Uh, now a quick tip, going back to project settings, when you set your timeline color space, if you want this to apply for all projects, click the three little dots on the top right and uh, choose to set current settings as your default preset. So that's the gist of fix number one. But as I mentioned earlier, a limitation of this fix is it's gonna apply these settings globally to your project which if you have a project of clips from different sources, this might not be what you want. As an example, I'm gonna to jump to the third clip in the sample project I have open. Uh, this is taken from a time-lapse video, and clearly there's some different color profiles going on here, because if we compare it to the previous clip, which is just a regular video, there's definitely a saturation difference. So the fixes that I applied works great for my regular videos, but then when I have this time-lapse video with obviously a different color profile, it's actually bumping it up too much. 
So in situations like this, we want to apply fix number two, where we're going to fix the colors on a clip by clip basis. And the first step for this is I'm going to revert my timeline color space back to what I had it on previously, Rec 709A. And this is going to make it so that as I'm viewing my clips in the timeline, I'm seeing them in that washed out state so we can play around with the colors and fix them. Uh, and the way we're going to fix the colors is we are going to apply a LUT or a lookup table. Uh, which is basically a data file that has color correction information embedded in it. So rather than having to tweak the colors ourselves, we're going to take a LUT that somebody else has built and apply it to our clips. Now where we're going to get this LUT is if you go over to filmicpro.com forward slash products forward slash LUTs, you can download their LUT pack. Uh, and they have a LUT within there that is very commonly used to fix the saturation issue we're looking at with this iPhone footage. So go ahead and download that pack. I've already done that. So in my downloads folder, I've got the zip file. I'll double click it to unzip it. And then we could see the contents of that. There's several different LUT files within here. The way that we're going to make these accessible within DaVinci, if we go back to DaVinci, I'm going to go back to my project settings. I'm still under color management. I'm going to click this button under lookup tables called open LUT folder. This is going to open the underlying folder on my computer where different LUT files are stored for DaVinci Resolve. And I just want to take that folder that I just unpacked and move it into this directory. So I'm just going to click and drag that. And then returning to DaVinci Resolve, we're going to click update list just to make sure it gets those latest files that we added. And then we'll go ahead and click save. Now to use those LUTs, we're going to switch over to the color tab. Uh, we can choose one of our clips and then open up our LUTs options. And then of the LUTs that you see, you should see a listing for the pack that we just added, that Filmic Pro pack. So we can expand this. There's uh, several different options within here. The one we're looking for is under 10-bit uh, SDR, LUTs iOS only. And there's two options here. Um, I'm typically using the DHLG one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click that and drag it over to my node for my currently selected clip. And there we go. Our clip is no longer washed out. Uh, if we want to see what it looked like before, just to compare and contrast, we can use the keyboard shortcut Shift D. So I'm going to press that now. This is what it was like before. Colors are washed out. If I press it again, this is what that LUT applied. So that's how we can adjust the LUT on a clip by clip basis. But let's say we want to apply it across multiple clips. What we can do is group together those clips. As an example, I'm going to create a group of these first two clips, which is my regular iPhone video footage. And this is going to be to the exclusion of the third clip, which is that time lapse video where I don't want this LUT applied. So I'm just going to click the first one, hold down shift and click the second one to select both of them. I'm going to right click and say add into a new group. I'll give this group a name. I'll just call it iPhone color fix and click OK. And then before I apply the LUT to this group on the top right, I want to change from clip to group post clip. And you'll notice my node goes from having a red outline to once I choose group post clip, it gets a yellow outline. All right, this is very important to have the LUT apply to each of the clips within this group. All right, and then with that set, I'm simply just gonna drag the LUT over again onto that node. And perfect, now both of these clips within this group have that uh, appropriate LUT applied. And then that third clip is not oversaturated. Now to wrap up the details of this second fix, the final thing I want to mention is just what uh, to be aware of when you finally go to export a video after you apply this technique. So let me go back to the export tab. And once again, we're focusing under our advanced settings for the color space and gamma tags. I'm going to leave them as same as project, which if we go back to our project settings, we have it set to Rec 709A. I'm not doing anything with that Rec 2020 or the HLG gamma tag like I did in fix number one because I've already applied my fix via the individual clips. If I were to start to change them to what I showed in fix number one, we would see that our output was actually too saturated. So long story short, we don't want to overlap our two fixes. We want to go with one of them that is most appropriate for the project. Uh, and again, fix number one is great if you have all of the clips with the same problem. Fix number two is more appropriate if you want to fix the problem on a clip by clip basis. And with that, that is my solution for dealing with color issues with my iPhone video footage when working in DaVinci Resolve. And I hope maybe this is helpful to you as well.